I mean earnestly. I want to pray for the drivers. I mean earnestly the consciousness of our drivers on 94, 57, 55, you name your expressway. You name your expressway that you or your family travel on. Let's name those expressways. And today, we are literally and sincerely asking God to cover us as we travel back and forth under the blood of Jesus. We are literally and sincerely, so you name the expressway that you travel or loved ones travel, you name that today as we intercede in prayer. We're also praying for the violence, the gunshots. We are earnestly, and what I'm saying is not, we're not praying for the guns and the bullets, we're praying for those who have the guns. We're praying for their consciousness today that the Holy Spirit, even if they're unbelievers, we're praying that God will prick the heart, the stony black heart of even unbelievers to give them a consciousness. Those who were gunned down and shot on 75th Street, those who were a couple of weeks ago shot up right down the street from us on 47th Street. It's no longer over there or over there. It's right here now. It's no longer over there in that neighborhood. It's everywhere. Let us sincerely pray. As we are praying for members of our faith communities that we will call their names aloud, we're not only just praying for them, we're praying for you. Those who are listening by phone, those who are listening and looking right now we are praying for you metropolitan let's lift up christina fletcher you know she relocated and she's had many physical challenges with cancer and the cancer has returned and is spreading all over the body again christina has learned faith and healing and she believes i want to pray for her peace of mind on today you know, one of our hearing impaired members who would dance to the glory of God. And the miracle was that she could hear the beat, or feel the beat, should I say, even if she couldn't hear the beat. Let's pray for Christina today. We're praying for Ella Kinsey, who is in the room, praying for she and her entire family and the transition of her sister, Dolores Elliott and Loretta Mopkins. We continue to pray for Jessica Hansberry, and Deanna Taylor, we continue to lift up Lillian and Michael Robinson and Linnell Sims, Willie and Francinia Green, we are praying for you. Geneva Smooth and Deacon Janice Thomas, Elsie Harrison and Sister Bernice Reed, Johnny Halton and Dorothy Gregory, Georgette Johnson, we are praying literally and sincerely for you. Sylvia Mandeville and Byron Benton, Larry Humphrey, we are praying, and I believe God, for continued restoration. Sister Arnetta Smith, who celebrated a birthday yesterday. Gloria Stratton and your entire family, we are praying. Evelyn Pelt, we are praying with you. She celebrated 91 years of life last Saturday. Amen to the glory of God. Dolores Brown, we are praying with and for you. We're praying for each and every one. We, I don't know all of your desires and your, your heart's desire, but God does. And God is able to do beyond what you can ask. Woo! Is there a witness in the house? God can and God will. And God is. He's moving right now. God is. He's everything that you need him to be. God is. He's your comforter. He's your guide. He's your strength. God is. And we are thankful. We're thankful for the right now moment that we have. Come on, saints. Let's, let's pray to the Lord. Our Father, and you are our God. Once more and again. You have favored us to gather in your house 
to gather as believers where you said in your word, where two or three are gathered in your name, you said you would be in our midst. Thank you for being right here, right now with us. Thank you for what we feel. Thank you for what we know. Thank you for what we are experiencing. Thank you, God, for the return of some members and those who will continue to be encouraged to return to your house. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us power, love, and of a sound mind. Continue to give us wisdom, your wisdom, O oh God. Continue to guide us and empower us. Continue, O oh God, to use us as instruments for your glory. God, as we've said earlier, God, we ask that you would cover us in our travel. Cover us under the precious blood of Jesus as we go here and there, oh God, as we travel on our expressways and local, oh God, we pray right now that you will build a hedge of protection around everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone that's listening. God, we're not asking selfishly, God, but we're asking because we have the privilege to ask our Father to cover us and let no harm nor danger come our dwelling. We ask, oh God, not only for ourselves, oh God, but for the person that's driving next to us, oh God. Keep them in their lane and keep us safely in our lane, oh God. We pray, oh God, for the temperament of unbelievers, oh God. Those who are traveling on the airplane and the trains and the buses, oh God. Those who are in the grocery stores, oh God. We rebuke the hand of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus that will rise up, oh God, and the temperament is all over the air. But God, we know that you are the God of God and the King of kings and you are able to arrest the prince of the air. And God, we call it out right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the enemy's on a rage, oh God. We've got members and loved ones who are afraid to come out of their doors. But God, you are our protector. Yeah, hey. God, you are our protector. You, God, release our ministering angels in the name of Jesus and give them charge over us. Give the angels charge over us right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we believe it right now. We count it done right now. These are just a few utterances out of my mouth, but God, I ask that you will hear the prayers of every saint around this world. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, we pray. Hear the meditations of our hearts, oh God. And God, right now, we release your anointing in this sanctuary. We release the anointing in the homes right now. God, give deliverance right now. We shall live and not die. We shall live, oh God, in the abundance, oh God. We shall live according to your promises, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh God, we thank you that's already done. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh God, right now, even on 46th and 47th, God, we release the ministering angels, God. Oh God, on every four posts of this building, we release the ministering angels, oh God. We release the guardian angels in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray, oh God, that even as our neighbors will walk back and forth across this building, oh God, that they will be arrested to do no harm. That they will be arrested because of the anointing that's in this building. Because of the anointing that's on this building. Because of the anointing anointing that's on this ministry and God the anointing shall break yokes in Jesus name and God we thank you in advance and the saints of God said amen say amen again now put those happy hands together and give a praise offering come on give a praise offering hallelujah 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 it is so and so it is. Oh, it's our time, y'all. It's our time to call it out. It's our time to walk and stand in faith. It's our time to be the church. 
that God has called for in this day, in this time. As we prepare our hearts to receive a word from the Lord, let's say amen for Brother Daniel Scott Jr. as he prepares to bring us a sermonic organ selection.
some of you were at home couldn't see, but some of our little children were just a dancing and jumping up and down. I don't know about you, but I'm happy that we're at a level that we can jump up and down, see the children jump up and down in the worship because God has been so good. Mother Boone, I see you over there praising God. She's thanking God for 95 years of life. Amen. God has been good. Hallelujah. God has been good. 95 years of life. And Stu was someplace else last Sunday eating something and not paying attention to nobody, but he celebrated 89 years around the sun. Isn't that good? And not only is that, but he is, we don't, we don't have a lot of men. Y'all women have done something. We have a lot of brothers, but we have had some faithful brothers. And he is one of the faithful who have served us for many years. And is one of our elders. You know, you know, in the old church, when you got to a certain age, this culture of experience don't like that. But you got to a certain age, uh, and they called you mother. You were on the mother's board. Or the brothers were called, they were the elders. But that's biblical, you all. It's biblical so that our young folk understand how to respect. And God calls us to respect the elders of the church because of their wisdom. And so I am grateful that but Stu is one of our more, no, I'm going to say it just like it is. He is one of the oldest men that's still living in our ministry. And sir, we salute you. And we thank God. We thank God for you. He's not cooking like he used to cook. Someone has suggested that pastor have a outside barbecue in the, in the parking lot for the 25th. And I'm like, no, we can't do that because our, our brothers, <laughs> we got Deacon Park and, and, and we got a few who will be willing, but no, we, I, I don't want to smoke them out. Y'all got me. <laughs> so we're just going to be thankful and do what we need to do. Times have changed, and we can change along with those times. But Stu and all the others, uh, I'm going to call some more names at the end, who is celebrating another year of life. We honor you, sir, and we honor the God of the salvation who is providing life here on earth. And that's what we're going to be preaching from about this morning. God, we thank you right now for laughter. We thank you for smiles. We thank you, God, for your presence. Ooh. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would allow your anointing to preach and teach through me. God, give us ears to hear you and hearts to hear you, Lord. And God, for all of these things, we'll continue to give your name the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, media ministry. I can now hear. <laughs> Life is too short. You've heard that many times. Life is too short. Jesus puts it this way according to the scripture of Psalms 39. He says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moth eats them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moth and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Jesus encourages us to chase after treasure that will last in heaven because where our treasure is, there is where our hearts are. The main idea, you all, of this morning's text is that life is too short 
to chase after things that has no value in eternity. Let me say that again. Life is too short to chase after things that have no value in eternity. Instead of infinity, let me use a number we can all understand. If we are extremely blessed, like some of our members have been, to reach 100 years of age, we believe and we celebrate because it is a milestone. When people reach 90, when people reach 80, they reach 70, are you with me? Three scores and 10. We celebrate these numbers because here on earth, they are milestones. But can I tell you that the difference between living on earth numbers and spending eternity with God is mighty different. 100 years, can turn, 100 years here on earth compared to a million years with God. There is no comparison. Are you with me? We, 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 we think that we got old. We're old for earth living, but not for eternity. And we have spent so much of our lives preparing for what we're going to do on earth that we forget, hello somebody, that we have eternity with God. We'll tell somebody, oh, they died young. They died young here on earth earth, but they're going to spend eternity with God. And so therefore, our numbers don't compare to God's eternity. So we've got to learn, according to the psalmist, to put more of our interest in eternity building than we do in our earthly life. We spend so much trying to get our homes together. Are you with me? Trying to get your, your you, we're trying to get your yards together. You're trying to get this together. And there's nothing wrong with that. We spend so much time in making investments to this earthly life that we forget that this earthly life is not to compare to what God has for us. We spend so much time, and really it's eternity that's hard to wrap around our minds. Can I say that again? It's eternity that's hard to wrap around our minds. So based on how we live our lives during this short 100 years here on Earth Plus will determine how we spend the next million years. The point of the psalm is that since life is too short in comparison to eternity, we ought to use every day to build up for ourselves more treasures in heaven. People are trying to get more retirement money, but you got to make sure that just like you're doing your retirement, make sure that you've got your treasure built up in heaven. In fact, you all know we could die anytime. We, we, it's, it's, no, it's no guarantee that we're going to see next week. There's nobody in this space that can guarantee that you will live here on earth next week. Nobody in this room can guarantee that we will live for the remaining of this day. Life is too short. We say that, but let's look at what the word of God teaches us about what we say. Too short, according to verses 1 through 3. Too short to focus on what others have. In verses 1 through 3, David says that life is too short to focus on what others have. Y'all ain't got that yet. Anybody going to say amen but me, but I'm going to say amen. Focusing on the success of the wicked is a waste of time and energy. My neighbors, they don't even go to church and they, they got this. My neighbors don't even, they don't even have faith. They don't even tithe and yet they're able to go on vacation. And here I'm doing this. We focus on the wicked. It's a waste of our time and a waste of our energy. When God disciplines his children, it is really is a blessing because God is doing everything in his power to prevent us from spending an eternity in hell. 
God is trying to prevent us from spending eternity in hell, eternally separated from him. We can be sure that as a loving father, whatever he sends our way, I heard the Sunday school class this morning, is meant to get us back on track. This COVID-19 was meant to get us back on track. And now we're trying to go back to how it used to be. God is saying, please don't go back to how it used to be. Go to the other side. Because on the other side, there's a closer relationship. There's a closer interpretation. There's a closer revelation. Stop trying to go back to the past and allow the past to do what the past is supposed to do to bring us some history. But understand that we are not committed to the past, but we're committed to move forward in order that God will get the glory and the ministry of God here on earth will be edified. It's not time to go back to how it used to be. You all who are looking by television said, Pastor, when we are fully this and when we're fully that, I'll come back to the sanctuary. Can I tell you when you get back to the sanctuary? Don't go back to your regular seat. It's not how it used to be. Don't think that the service is going to be the very same. It's not how it used to be. We're working under the authority of an anointing that can change this service in a round, any minute, any second, any moment right now. It's not how it used to be. You ain't been here in a whole year but the word of God has gone forth. You may not have been in the sanctuary, but God is still on the throne. You may not be have been on your knees, but God is still answering prayer. You may not have been in the multi-purpose room, but God is in his holy temple and let all the earth keep silence before him. It's not how it used to be. There won't be a used to be. God used this season. God used all of this time, even death of our loved ones and family and friends to wake us up, to teach us that life is too short. Focusing on the wicked as described in verse 1 and the first half of the verse 2 confuses us and frustrates us. Really, you are the main thought here. I saw you that saying amen to that. The main thought here is to be silent. Ooh. And saints don't like to be quiet. We always want to have, I got you, the last word. And sometimes God is trying to silence us. Silence in the Christian life can truly be golden when we sit and contemplate about our relationship with God. The words used here are terms that describe someone exercising self-discipline. The psalmist is serious about remaining silent. In the first and the third lines of the verse, he uses the word guard, shamar in Hebrew, Minister Solomon. The first line says, I will guard my ways. The third line reads, I will guard my mouth as if it's muzzling it. Two of the spiritual disciplines I am trying to learn how to practice this year is silence and solitude. Silence and solitude. It is good to quiet our minds and our mouths in order to wait for God to demonstrate his love and his will for us. We must wait with spiritual open eyes and ears and with soft and open hearts and with a desire to obey. So it seems as if the psalmist is practicing the spiritual disciplines of silence. When I was speaking and ministering and meeting with one of our members yesterday, and we were talking about things of the future, and I said, you know what? We, 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 we're always trying to meet it out. Meet, M-E-E-T, trying to meet it out. Trying to figure, Pastor, I don't understand it. You ain't supposed to understand it. And guess what? You don't have to understand it. But it's your responsibility to obey it. Well, Pastor, when I, when, but see, I don't get it. And so, if I, and what I don't understand, I don't do. That's not how God operates in His Word. There were times that they, the disciples didn't understand what the assignment was, but they said, do it. They didn't understand what the assignments were, but just do it. We've got to learn that it is not your responsibility to under every, to under, understand everything and all to have to be in the loop of everything in order for the kingdom of God to go forth. God is looking for some agreement, 
So some of, some of Greers, Christians, they will say, amen, amen, amen. It is so. It shall be done. It will be done. Now, what am I to do? Y'all don't hear that. I know, I know, I know. And let me tell you something. When the enemy, when the enemy is, is, is telling me, who he talking about? I ain't talking about nobody in particular. I'm talking about us. All of us. All of us. We try to compromise with God. God, And life is too short to compromise. If we, hey, oh my God, I'm, I'm only 60, I'll be 62 this year too, and I'm just now learning that life is too short to waste time on somebody else's business. I'm, I, I've just learned. Are you with me? And, 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 and David got angry because when he looked back and thought about his neighbors and what they had accomplished, he got angry and so he had to muffle his mouth. He has to silence himself. In our world, it seems as if the wicked seems to prosper. The more wealth, power, and fame one has, the more they're able seemingly to get away with lawlessness. We have said this before in our study through the Psalms, but we see need to remind ourselves frequently that the world under the control of Satan has come to value wealth, power, fame, and pleasure as the most precious things that we can possess. How much money you have gets you more respect. But can I tell you, money has shown us that you can have it or don't have it, but a dis-ease don't have any issue. We're knocking on your bank account. What about the anointing? of God. What about the anointing? You, you ought to want kingdom stuff more than you want earthly stuff. It's all right to have money, but you want the anointing along with the money. You, it's all right to have wealth, but you want the anointing along with the wealth. It's all right to have things, but you want the anointing with the things. Are you with me? So that when you, when things run out and things happen in your life and you realize that your money cannot buy your healing and your money cannot buy your peace of mind, you've got to know that there's a God with or without. I did not tell you that yesterday. I've learned, hallelujah, in this life to have it and I've learned not to have it. And when I don't have it, I've learned how to be content because I've realized that life is too short to base on things and my car don't work, but I've got life. My money is short, but I've got life. My health is not right, but I still got some breath in my body where we learn that life is too short to focus on what we don't have and what they do have and where we have not gone and where they have been. Life is too short. When we look at them and it appears that they have control of the world of the world and we look at the pawns to be used by them. And we have already said that the people of this world try to chase after these things, obtain them and hold on to them and accumulate them. People uh, got all kind of dishes. Are you with me? I don't have to go down the list. You already know what I'm talking about. People got things in their homes that they have not used. Who's going to use them? Well, I don't want them to be broken, but it doesn't matter who breaks them. If you break them, you've got a, a whole nother box that you've not even opened up. Amen, somebody. We, 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 we put our, we have a china cabinet that's so dusty because we don't use the things. And yet, we want to, our china cabinets have been for the display. So when people come into your house, they can look at your china cabinet and your china cabinet is supposed to represent the wealth of your lineage. But can I tell you that life is too short just to be looking at your china cabinet. You ought to open it up and wash the stuff and use it. Even if you put orange juice and water in it, put a lemon in it, baby, and make it look better than it was. But you've got to learn how to use I don't use this cologne until just I go out on Sundays. Put your best cologne every day of your life. Smell good for yourself. Stop trying to smell good, look good for somebody else. Put your makeup on for yourself. Put your hair on for yourself. Put your best clothing on for yourself. In fact, learn to love the best of you yourself. So when you love somebody else, you give them what God has already given to you. And that's life. Look and live, my brothers and sisters. Live. Look to Jesus and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. Look to Jesus and live. Look at the second verse line in verse 3. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of having dead folk walking. Got to start living. 
I'm way past when it gets better. But if it, if it, even if it don't get better, make it better for you today. Life is too short for you not to be happy right now. Life is too short for you not to forgive. Life is too short for you not to be restored. Life is too short for you to wait on somebody to bring you happiness. Stop waiting on somebody and depending on somebody else to bring you happiness. Happiness is based on what happens. Look, if I don't ever get it, if I don't ever receive it, I've got joy. And the joy that I have the world can't give it to me and the world cannot take it away. Can I get somebody to shout hallelujah? You see that he is trying not to let it out but he's, he's eating him up in the Psalms. Look at the second line in verse 3. Instead of meditating and contemplating on God he starts to meditate on the prosperity and the success of the wicked. I mean the text y'all. In other words he keep playing the over and over and over again in his mind. The more he replays it and stews on it, the more confused and depressed and angry and worked up he gets. Have you ever not liked somebody and they and they don't even care? And they walk in the office and they smile like, good morning, Sister Sean. And you've been talking about them in your mind all week long. Amen, somebody. Y'all ain't going to be honest with me in here. But you've been, and then they come in smelling good, looking good. And you all mad, dang, because they're looking good and smelling good. Because they don't even care. And the scripture is teaching us that you have allowed this to replay in your mind. But the reason why they driving that car because I had to give them a loan. Now you telling everybody, Marcella, that you gave them a loan and it was supposed to have been between you and them, but now you got upset with them because they're looking good. They knew how to use your money to make them look better and you got the money and you looking like poor man, poor woman. Hello, somebody. And you up there looking like, well, I even wear Chanel. Well, then the devil is a liar. You can go down to Walgreens and pick up your little small bottle and, and put a little dab here, put a little dab there, and be happy in Jesus' name. Life is too short to be looking in your closet and not understanding, looking at somebody else's closet and not being thankful for what's in your closet. Life is too short if I don't have an automobile. Thank God I got legs that I can walk. Hello, somebody. Thank God, thank God, thank God. When I look at some of our members who may not have owned an automobile, but God gave them in place of the automobile, God gave Ruth some good health so she can get up and down on the bus by herself, so she can walk safely from from one corner to the next corner. You have to look at what God has done. It's a shame that she ain't got no car. But look at what God gave her. God gave her health. God gave her the ability. God gave her the strength. And God gives her the protection to come here and there and there and here. When we think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for us, life is too short to be comparing ourselves to somebody else. With life, and we get angry, we get angry, we get angry because we, we feel we've reached an age and we have not anything. The speech is not holy, Lord, y'all. Our speech is not holy when we think of these things. This speech itself is fueled from hell. We have to continually said this. Jesus said it best. Good people bring good things out of good stored up in their heart. And evil people, I'm in the 45th verse, bring evil things but out of the evil stored in their heart. For out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. What's in your heart will come. You ain't got to tell me. Well, I, 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 you, can't, you can't question me if I'm saved or not. I don't have to question. Your light is already shining. You may be saved, but you're not walking in solitude. You may be saved, but you're not walking under the anointing. You may be saved because of what you believe, but you are not walking with the fruit of the Spirit. You don't have no gentleness. You don't have no meekness. You don't have no forgiveness. You don't have no long suffering. Are you with me? You don't have you don't have no fruit of the spirit. I don't have to tell you. I got stuff. I I, I have trees in my yard that are now beginning to bloom. I know I got five different trees. I know there's a green apple tree. I know there is a strawberry tree. I know there's a berry tree. Are you with me? Because the fruit speaks 
for itself. Believers, you, what's in your heart, what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. Y'all didn't get that yet. What's in your heart will come out of your mouth. If you're driving and a curse word comes out, it wasn't because of the driver. It was already there. You just manifested it. You just agreed with it. it was all. Come on, somebody. If you got an attitude with somebody, you've been building up and you've been waiting. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait till I see Mamie. And when I see Mamie Montella, it's, and, and, and she comes in saying, Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you got an attitude. Your face expressions. Life is too short. Can I tell you? I wish I could, I'm going to have to wrap it up real soon. If we gossip, it, it, look, I, I want us to think about this for a moment. I've heard some of the most evil, judgmental, critical, and nasty things come out of people who call themselves Christians. I'll say it again. I have heard some of the most evil, judgmental, critical, and nasty things come out of the mouth of people who call themselves Christians. We should all take time to review the words that we speak each day. If we gossip about people, if we judge people, if we criticize and say nasty things about people or to people, then Jesus is saying that this is what our hearts are full of. Have mercy on us, Lord. Our hearts are full. I have to admit that when I catch myself saying something out of anger or frustration, it hurts me to think this is not just coming out of my mouth, Yvonne. It is coming from my heart filled with anger and frustration. This is a, it started to bother me, but it was bothering the poet in Psalm 39. He realizes this can't be good. How does this happen? We start to focus on the things the world values. We, we too start to chase after wealth and power and pleasure and fame. We start to value them and resent God for not giving them to us. Hey Amen, somebody. That's not who the psalmist wants to be. It's not who I and we should want to be. I'm pretty sure it's not who all of you want to be. Instead, I think that we desire to be people Jesus described as hearts so filled with his love and his goodness that grace is what comes out of our mouths in order that we need to focus on God and his kingdom is value. We, we must keep in mind, y'all, that we belong to the kingdom and God is our father. We belong to the kingdom and God is our father. Focusing on the success of the wicked is a waste of time and energy. Did you ever see kids in school that were not very good at playing sports? It just seems as if they were missing the sports gene. That's the way we should be in chasing after worldly things. Of course we will not be as successful as the world in chasing after wealth, power, money, and fame. But since we are born from above, we are missing. We are missing chasing after God with all of our hearts. Life is too short to waste time as he lays out in verse 4 and 6. I'm going to have to stop after this one. Since life is short, we need to evaluate what we are spending our time on. What do we spend our time on? I think it's worthwhile, a spiritual exercise to, to lay out our day planners and our checkbook credit card statements and DVRs. What do you mean? We did this years ago, y'all. Years ago we did this when we had a financial stewardship program come in and we, just to see where your heart was, he said, look in the back of the checkbook and see where you, what you have paid out and you see where your treasure is. Look at your credit card statements and see what that represents. You'll see where your treasure is. I know we got quiet in here. It's an exercise. Look at your DVD players and look at your, your, your playlist on your television and you'll see where your treasure is. Many of us are in debt no, I, let me change that, change that. 
Some of you are in debt because of where your treasure is. Your treasure is looking good for other people and wearing yeah, my dad, I thank God for my dad, Reuben James Pace, I thank God for him saying, if you're going to wear it, you ought to be able to carry the same amount in your pocket, son. Don't wear Gucci and you ain't got Gucci money. He didn't even know what Gucci was. At that crime time, it wasn't Gucci, it was Christian Dior. That was our thing. If you're going, you know, Christian Dior, you know, that, that's at that time. If you're going to wear those expensive shoes, Make sure that you have that money. And I remember buying my first suit, well-made tailor suit. And my dad, I asked my dad as he was helping me to tie my tie, Dad, how does it look? He said, it looks good, but how are you, what you carrying? And when I was able to go into my pocket and pull out the amount that I was wearing, now he said, you can wear it. My brothers and sisters, we put our treasure in things and then we, we die with a, we don't die giving our families an inheritance because our treasure has been eaten up, worn out. And we don't realize that there's an eternity that we're going to spend and we don't prepare, we prepare our children for this and that and other. We give, a, well, my, one of my goddaughters is preparing to get married and she showed me, her, no, she didn't show me, her father showed me the budget. And I'm like, good Lord, are you kidding me? What are we going to be eating? And what, 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 what possibly could we be experiencing without Jesus coming out from the cloud for this amount of money? And I know that everybody wants to have their day. Pastor ain't got no issue with that as long as I ain't paying for it, so you do whatever you want to do. But wisdom according to the word of God is my responsibility to tell you that life is too short to put all of that hundred some thousand dollars in three hours of people who don't even care. That most of the people don't even like you. And they ain't gonna be talking about you drinking your champagne, eating your filet mignon. Are you with me? Eating eat all your food, talking about you at the table and getting in the car. I said, girl, you didn't miss nothing. She was looking okay. It was okay, but I wouldn't have done all of that. I would have life is too short. Can you, can I help somebody? I've learned, I've learned if you're happy with it, I'm good with it. Amen. So I've learned if you're happy with it, I'm good with it. I've learned to keep my business out of your address, out of your house. If you're happy with there, 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 I'm good with it. Life is too short for me even to stand here in this holy sacred desk to be judgmental on anybody or to throw scriptures out of you. I'm only trying to correct us to understand that life is not about us having bills and, and being under a bondage. We have to be happy. You be whatever you have, you have to be able to be happy. Go from here, happy. Go from here, understanding that trouble and trials will come but life is too short for me not to understand that I serve a God who's able to take me through life and bring me out into eternity and we have to understand that our world is a short world our world is full of trouble our world is full of trials and tribulations but thanks be unto God we've got a savior that has overcome this world and therefore he said that we will be with him in eternity so when God understood that we were screwing up and messing up and turning things around he had to understand that we've got to understand that vanity is vanity. All is vanity. And some of us, we've got to let go of vanity and let go and let God come in. We've got to go back and let God have his dominating place in our life so that we understand that, you know what, I'm going to live today as my best and my last day. Okay, 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 okay. The pastor, my dad used to teach this. My dad used to say, well, look, so I understand you, you Faith, you know, teaching, preaching, and all that. What happens if you if you spend all of it today and you live tomorrow? Dad, it's another day. It's a new day. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New. All that I have needed. 
his hand. Now, I, I'm not telling you to go out here and spend all of your account. I'm not telling you to go out here and spend everything you've got. But I am telling you that if you're going to make a sacrifice, don't make some sacrifice on just the things. Make sacrifices on things that will bring you happy. I was with a friend of mine, a young lady friend of mine on this past Friday, and she came out driving real good. I know she ain't watching, so I can talk about it. I'm not going to be calling her name. She came out driving her brand new uh, two-seater Mercedes, black on black. Top was down, bad, 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 looking good. Had the big old glasses on, and bad, bad, bad. Had bling, bling on the wheel, bad, bad, bad. Now she had to, she drive from 47th Street, so she had to, she, she had to put a top up until she got to 95th Street, and then she let the top down to get to my house. And before she left my house, she had to put the top back up in order to get back onto 47th Street. But bad, bad, bad. And she wanted to go out to eat, and she knew what she wanted to go to eat. And then she started fumbling in her brand new uh, coach bag. It's a new bag, small little bag. Got all kind of colors on it, and you can't tell it's a coach now. Oh, bad, bad. But when she went into the purse, acting like she was looking for something. All of a sudden, I, Leon, guess what? I already know, sweetheart, right? I got it. <laughs> you put your treasure, it's called balance in life. It's called balance, it's called balance. Life is too short, you all. Life is too short to put idols on the world. Now, and, and, and the, I, I, see, I guess because I, I didn't always have nice things. I didn't always have a nice automobile. I used to have a car. I drive an automobile now. I, I, but I, I've not always driven an automobile. Y'all like that. And so for me, I, I, I haven't always had, I had always had a checking account, but I haven't always had anything Hello, somebody. I remember, you know, and for so long, some of the members thought that I never had any furniture in my house. I'm like, you know, I didn't have a lot. But I learned something. That when you see ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew 6, 33 says, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So I've learned that things that I have are just what they are, things to be enjoyed in this life here on earth because when we get to heaven, we can't bring our things. Because the place where we're going, where Jesus is, he has prepared the place. He has provided. And, and so, so enjoy your things here on earth because you won't need them in spending eternity with God. So take out your best slip. I know y'all don't wear slips anymore, but some of y'all don't even know what slips are. But but when y'all use them, take out your best. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Take take out the best. Don't wait till Sunday. Put on the best socks, Marshall. Not the ones with the yeah holes in them, but put on the best, y'all, because life. It's too short not to enjoy your loved ones. Life is too short not to give God the best of your service. Life is not, it's too short not to give God your best praise. Life is too short not to say I love you to the one sleeping next to you every night and good morning and say I love you again. Life is too short not to forgive and to be restored. Life is too short not to be happy. Life is too short not to worship God with all that you got. Life is too short to worry on things that worry can't change. Life is a gift from God. It's called a presence. Enjoy your presence today. Unwrap it. 
and understand that your best with God in eternity is still to come. I, my, my, my bishop called me because, and I love my bishop. He corrects me, he, but he loves me. He called me and was talking about where I have been for the first time in almost two years, my other home. And he said, Lady Beverly, they've been married for 54 years this week. He's 79, and she will be turning 75 next month. And Mama Mary E., he said, Lady Beverly wants to go where you've been. And she wants to go to all the restaurants. Can you share with me the information about where you've been? And I said, Bishop, it's my honor to share the information. What are you trying to do? He told me what he was trying to do when he was trying to go, what he wanted to experience, etc. He called me three times, texted me two on last Sunday, and I didn't respond because I didn't have any information. God was working it out. But he got impatient, got a little attitude on the phone when I finally called him back. Well, it took you long enough. And I'm like, well, sometimes it takes a little time to get your requests. Long story short, you all, I called him back and said, that's okay. The only thing I need you to do is get to the airport on this day. Arrive here. He said, well, what about, I said, the only thing, the only thing you need to do is get to the airport. Bishop, you, you, you taught me at a heaven on earth conference when I was at my lowest of lowest of ministry. And not only did I want to give up, but turn in. And I sat in the back of the Light of the World Christian Church. I wasn't going to, I shared this testimony, but I wasn't even going to go to the conference meeting that night because I got in late. But the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me stay in the hotel room, got me up, got me dressed. And there was one seat in the back of the sanctuary of this heaven on earth conference. My dear friend, Brother Walter Owens, invited me to the conference. He said, Leon, I believe that it will be a blessing for you. I drove there alone in the dark, not knowing where I was going. But he said, Leon, I believe that it will put life back into your soul, and the life that you need back into your soul will be deposited in your ministry. I was not the pastor of this church. I was a servant who was willing to hear whatever God wanted me to hear. Sat there in the back, and the Lord began to minister to me through the words of Bishop T. Gary Benjamin. He had, he had never seen me a day in my life. He adopted me as one of his spiritual sons, and he began to deposit it into me. He says, son, God will raise us up to be a blessed people, and we are blessed to be a blessing. I didn't understand the technology of the theology of that scripture or that statement, but I believed the words that were being uttered out of his mouth. And I saw and felt the uh, spirit of the, the anointing in that place, and I wanted everything. So I was quiet, y'all, sitting behind him because I wanted to live. I wanted to live. And brought me back to my remembrance of my own pastor, Dr. Dorothy Sutton Branch, when I would walk through the funeral homes, imagining that that was my church. I would walk and clean her cars, her fleet of cars, imagining that they were my cars. I was walking in her mansion at 5706 West Adams, picking up and cleaning up the, the, the dirt around her house, William, and I was cleaning up her basement. When I was cleaning up her basement, I was imagining that that was in my house, that was in my house, that was in my house. I was imagining and I was dreaming that where she was sitting in the porch and when people were walking by, I was imagining and dreaming, Sean, that that was my kitchen. And then I got to the bishop and I was invited to their home and I started dreaming. But more important, I wasn't dreaming of the things. I wanted his anointing. I wanted the oil from his life. I wanted the oil. I wanted the anointing. I wanted the oil from his life. I wanted the oil when they were going out and they were talking about new land and I was in the back of the truck and I was being silent. I was dreaming on behalf of Metropolitan Community Church that the oil that was on that man of God would flow upon me to see that vision is a reality because we can trust God and that life is for the living and I was looking at the life and the glamour, not the glamour of as far as things, but the glamour and the spirit of the living God. And God has allowed me to return what he seeded into my life. Don't you fool yourself 
if you have seen it, it will come back. I told my bishop, Bishop, the only thing you're going to do is show up. Can I tell you, God is telling us the same thing, that all we have to do is show up. God has taken care of everything else. Life is too short. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Look and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. To look up and live. It is so. And so it is. And the people of God said amen. Amen and amen. As we continue to worship the Lord our God this morning, we don't ever want to take for granted that someone listening to us has not has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's an easy process. You believe, you confess, you trust, and you receive. If you've been listening and you've only been surviving, I want you to live. God wants you to live. Let me change that. God wants, he gave you life today here on earth so that you can live and live in the abundance of his promise. If you're here right now and say, Pastor, I want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, you can do that. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your heart by praying this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Heal me. Receive me into your kingdom. Lord, forgive me. Place life into my existence. I want it in your name. Amen. By praying that prayer of faith, I believe the word of the Lord, and I believe that you are right now saved. It's important, though, that you be a part of a Christian family that will feed and nurture you so that you can continue to grow in your faith and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here if you desire for us to connect with you. 773-536-2046. Yes, that number. Call it right now. Leave a detailed message. Your name and your intent. 773-536-2046. Surrender everything and watch the Lord do what God is able to do. Let's say amen and celebrate those who are giving their lives to Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to worship the Lord in our giving. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are blessed to be a blessing and we are able to give because we have. And we have because we give. Jesus said it best, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If we give of ourselves, of our time and our money, that is one less soul tied to the world. I told you this morning, we are to lay up our treasures here on earth. And where our treasure is, there will be our heart also. Let's bring our tithes and offerings to the storehouse that there might be provision, there might be meat. Prove me, said the Lord, and see that I would not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. There are various ways to give. You see it on the screen, those of you who are viewing. Let's worship the Lord right now. Give the five. Text to give. Those of you who have milled and you're giving in, we have received them to the glory and to the honor of God. Let's make the devil out of a liar this year. Let's not stop because somebody's opened up phase five for the city. And then you know how you know how folk will, it's open now, Pastor. I'm, he, he saw me through. If you want him to see you through beyond what they say and what they think and what they know. You want to make sure that you are connected through eternity. Let us pray. God, thank you for the obedience of your children. Thank you, God, for giving to us what we can give back to your ministry. God, give us increase, we pray. 
in Jesus' name. God, lead and guide and direct the faithful stewards of this ministry as we pay our bills this week, as we do ministry this week. Lead and guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just a few ministry highlights. Dear Metropolitan family, heartfelt thanks to you for the expressions of sympathy, of sympathy and kindness during the transition of my brother-in-law, Louis E. Hobson. Every card, prayer, offering, offered up to help and to uh, uh, the verbal condolences given to me was a blessing and passed on to my sister and her family. We are so grateful and thankful for your support. May you be blessed as you have blessed us. Sincerely, Sister Ruth Simpkins. Amen. Once again, happy birthday to everyone who's celebrating the month of June. I hear you, Daniel. Uh, you always want to mess me up. I want you to know, oh my God today. Our food pantry is completely open. And we want you to know that our food pantry is open now on Saturdays from 11 to 1 p.m. Amen. And so we still in need, are in need of volunteers. And so we desire, if you desire to serve, serve, help serve the community, please show up and call the office. And you can see Sister Deacon, Deacon Janice Thomas for additional information. This week is the last week of Metropolitan graduates to turn in the requested information along with an appropriate picture to be used for our graduation recognition Sunday, which is going to be on June the 27th. Amen. Get that information in this week. Amen. Don't tell me afterwards about your graduation this week. Amen. You all are smart enough and and intelligent enough to get those pictures, an appropriate picture, a picture. That's what you mean, an appropriate picture. Preferably a graduation picture. This is not your prom picture. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but this is not the, we want an appropriate picture. Amen. Because the saints will talk about you and your mama who bought you that outfit. Amen. Amen. It ain't like it used to be, y'all. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. How many of y'all had a curfew at prom night? I had a curfew. My daddy was sitting in the kitchen. I came in a half an hour after my curfew. And my daddy told me, don't you ever come in my house after the curfew. I called myself, let my dad and mama go to bed. I heard him snoring from downstairs in the basement. I came back upstairs, called myself sneaking out again because I wanted to go to the after party of the prom. My daddy and mama were sitting in the kitchen again when I got back in, and I used a butter knife to get in the house because they, 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 they locked the screen door and the door. You know how it used to be from the basement to the kitchen? You had a door, and you, had, you can lock it, and I called myself taking a little little butter knife on the end, and I'm going to pop that lock. I pop that lock, and my daddy was saying, uh-huh, I see the sun coming out. Let you know that I ain't never walked in my own house, the house that I live in as an adult when the sun came out. I stayed where I was <laughs> until it was time for me to safely come home to my own house. Amen. Uh, it was a different day. That's a whole other story. I know, I know. See the kids looking at me now. Pastor, don't even go there. Well, trying to keep y'all safe and trying to keep you holy until the time is right. Amen. Then you're going to stop coming to church for nine months. Amen. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, man. That's why you ought to hold to his hand. We got trouble. Man, get out of trouble. Hold to his hands. God's unchanging hands. Build, build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging It's time to go home. 
Be blessed and live your life this week. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You ought to hold to his hands. God's unchanging hands. You ought to build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In your going and in your coming, the Lord be with you both now and forever is our prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, as we all affirm by singing together. in the joy of the Lord.